Hey everybody, welcome to Peppermint and Tobacco, a YouTube channel all about home fragrance, including candles, and today we're going to recycle a uh, large candle jar into a terrarium, so stay tuned. Thanks everybody for coming back. If you're new to the channel and you like content about home fragrance, candles, and even how to recycle or upcycle your old candle jars, you're in the right place, so please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you. And those of you who are old friends, welcome back. So, you know, I love to recycle my um, candle jars. You know, you have to clean them out in order to put them into the municipal recycling, but you can also reuse them into really creative things. So today we're going to make a terrarium, so stay tuned to find out how. Before we get too deep into the content, I wanted to share with you that I'm burning Goose Creek's Breezy Tulips. This is a candle I ordered several weeks ago, and I've really been enjoying it. You can see that I burned it almost like, well, the wax pool is about halfway, um, but I have uh, really been surprised and enjoying this candle, so I've got it here as we make our uh, craft project today. So again, we're going to make a terrarium, and this happens to be a Yankee Candle Jar, but you can make it out of Goose Creek Jar. You can see how it's really similar, or any other candle jar uh, that has a similar shape. So, of course, I have um, removed all the wax and the labels from the candle jar and I'm not using the lid or the top I'm just using the candle jar itself although you could use the top to really seal in um, the moisture if you wanted to so uh, I uh, freeze the candle the remnants of the candle wax in the freezer at least overnight and then I use a um, knife uh, to gently go around the outside of the candle wax and usually it pops right out. So the hard paraffin wax of a Yankee candle or um, the Goose Creek candles are really easy to pop out. Softer waxes like um, Nest wax, Nest fragrances candle, they're a little bit harder and you may need to, uh, to spoon or scoop them out but they'll come out eventually as well. So um, clean out your candle jar. I, then I use uh, soapy hot water to remove all of the uh, soot or any of the wax that's remaining on the candle because I or candle jar because I want it to be uh, nice and clean and pretty. So let's so you start out with your candle jar, use your candle jar. Today we're going to use a wet foam. And so wet foam is sometimes called Oasis foam after a name brand. And I happen to pick this um, up at um, Michael's and they don't carry, or at least in my store they didn't carry the Oasis brand. And so uh, in a pinch I picked this up and it comes in these large bricks. I won't take them out, um, but they come in these large bricks and oftentimes I don't need to use a whole brick and so I end up with pieces left over. And so I have a scrap piece that I have left over. Hang on just a second. I just have a collection of empty scrap pieces that I save um, for odds and ends and to shove into different pieces. So, you know, um, waste not, want not. And so I, it's really great because this piece is going to be perfect. So you want to have a uh, wet foam. You want to have your um, piece up or your jar. And then I found this small fern at a local garden center. Um, I think Home Depot or Lowe's probably has these small plants. I'll bring it up close. This is just small green. I think this is called like a rabbit fern or something like that. It's very small. And um, hold again. I got a few others um, that are also teeny tiny small plants. So you can find the plants that you like in these smaller sizes. Really cute, different kinds of greenery. But I'm going to start out with this plant. Uh, this fern and so I also have some preserved moss and this preserved moss comes in a large bag and I would use it over and over again until the moss uh, no longer looks good but this came off some paper whites that I made over the fall and this is also a bunch of preserved moss just happens to be in another smaller bag. I also have some uh, tumbled river pebble rocks and they're here. I just recently rinsed them off to make sure they were uh, uh, extra clean and they're just here on drying on a paper towel and then I have a um, bowl here that has some room temperature water it doesn't have to be ice cold you know uh, as long as uh, you can put your hands in it's not too warm you don't want to have hot water because you're going to um, get it on the, the plant in just a second so those are our ingredients oh I almost forgot you'll want to have a butter knife and potentially a spoon um, to help uh, form your shape of your foam. So to recap, candle jar, wet foam, preserved moss, you want to have a plant, a small plant of some type. I have some pebbles here, those are optional. 
and then water in a bowl, you can put this in the sink as well. So, okay, now to get started, I'm gonna take my wet foam, it's not wet yet, it's still dry, and I'm gonna take my the pot of my little fern and I'm gonna push it down on the top to make an indentation and a print. And the foam is really soft and will make an indentation there. And that is going to be my outline where I'm going to scoop out the, mo uh, the moss. I'm gonna scoop out the foam so that I can then take this plant out of the pot and place it down into the foam. So I'm gonna use a spoon and it goes in really easily. I'm gonna use a spoon and just scoop it out. If you were smarter than me, you might scoop this out over the trash can, but you can see how the foam comes in little bits. You might wanna clean it up a little bit. I'll bring it up to you. So I've just made a hole out of the wet foam so that I can put this plant down inside. Now, you'll see that my um, foam is too big for this uh, jar opening and so I'm going to cut it off a little bit. It doesn't have to be pretty. So here I've cut my foam into a little bit smaller shape that will fit down into the jar. Now that the foam is in the right shape, I'm going to place it on the top of the water in this bowl and I'm going to let the foam sink down as it absorbs the water. You don't want to push it down, you want to let the foam absorb water as it sinks down. It'll sink and absorb water, it's almost like a little magic trick. And then once it's fully... Um, absorbed, it will sink down to the bottom. So you basically want to fill the um, bowl with more water than the depth of the foam that you're using. And it just takes a few minutes. I'm going to take the foam out of the water. And now I'm going to actually dunk my plant into the water too. I want the soil in this plant to be super, super um, moist and wet. I don't want there to be any air pockets. I want it to be totally wet. So I'm just gonna submerge it for a second. There are little air bubbles that are coming out and I can see them and hear them. I'm gonna let this drain for just a moment. And then I'm going to turn the fern over and then just gently press the sides and then it should all come out in one piece. And then I'm going to place the fern gently into the cutout that I have formed here. And it's okay that the fern doesn't get all the way into the moss because the cup was a little bit taller and that's okay. And now I'm going to gently place it down into the jar. Now I'm going to pause right here and I'm going to clean the jar up because there was a little bit of soil and I'm going to use a paper towel to clean it up and we'll be right back to do the moss. Okay, so we're back and all I did while you were gone is use a paper towel to sort of wipe down some of the sides of the jar. And I'll bring the jar over to you so you can see that the fern is sort of sticking out a little bit from the oasis. And there's some soil down here on the bottom and that's okay because we're going to cover that up with some moss. So the preserved moss is a natural material, but it's been dried out and I want it to, uh, to get a little bit uh, damp. It's, uh, it can be really messy. And so I'm going to take the moss and I'm going to put it into the water just for a second and then I'm going to squeeze it out. And then I'm going to use, I'm going to spread it out so that it's not in a wad. And then I'm going to just place it down along the side of the jar. Do a little bit more. And I'm covering up the oasis and the soil. You might want to use a knife or another um, 
utensil, and I'll turn it around, like maybe a, a skewer or even the other end of the spoon, to gently manipulate the moss and get it down into the bottom of the jar. So I'm letting it float, the moss float in there for a second, absorb water, and then wringing it out. And then I'm going to turn so I can see. Actually, I'll come around here to the front, and I'm going to slide the moss down. decide to put to add you know to the natural look and put a few stones down in the bottom in a few different places and that will just add to the natural look it's not required but I happen to have a few there so if you happen to have other things that you think would look good um, in your little jar you can add those so I'm So here's our finished product. I have placed moss all the way around the uh, oasis foam and the soil that was up a little bit from the fern. And then I, I used a knife just to gently get it in place and wasn't too exact. You want it to have a natural look and then I placed a few stones. And so I'll just uh, turn the jar around. There we go. And so you've made sort of like just a mini jar it's sort of like a little fairy hangout this is a great project that um, for you to do with kids and it's a wonderful way uh, to recycle your jar so i made a big mess here but in just a moment i'll take a picture so you can see it nice up close and put it in the video And I almost forgot about the maintenance of your terrarium. So you want to follow the instructions that come with your plant. So many of these small plants or tropical plants, of course, that means that they shouldn't be exposed to lower temperatures or frost. And they're also used to probably regular water supply. So these plants that I picked are different from succulents. And so succulents are also small plants that you'll find at Lowe's and Home Depot and they don't need a lot of water. So be sure that you identify the water and fertilizer needs of the plants that you're using. Succulents are gonna be different from things like ferns that I used in this particular terrarium. Um, so uh, for this particular terrarium, I'm gonna make sure that it gets regular water. I'm gonna just eyeball it and use my finger. If it feels a little moist, then I'll, then I'll be okay probably a little bit less than a quarter cup of water probably every week. I would almost say like an eighth of a cup of water, just a little bit, a couple of drops once a week to make sure the soil stays moist. Now, this is a very uh, small container. It probably has a limited life. You'll probably be able to enjoy it for about six months or so. At some point, the, um, this particular terrarium doesn't have all the needs that the plant is going to need. So you'll probably need to refresh it about every six months, but you're going to enjoy it uh, for a while. So this is a great project for your desk or another uh, spot in your living room that where you want something to be green growing, but it may be something that you might grow tired of and want to change out every uh, so often. So thanks everybody for staying to, for staying tuned in all the way to the end. If you have uh, suggestions about terrariums or other ways to recycle uh, your candle jars, leave those in the comments below. See you soon.